we are going to DIY ambient lighting using a Raspberry Pi, Hyperion software and some LED strips, meaning there will be colors behind your TV that will be in sync to the currently displayed image, bringing watching TV experience to whole another level. Coming up! Hello, Kirill Payanskis here. In general, you have three options to achieve TV ambient lighting. To buy a TV that have this feature by default, to buy a kit that could be both expensive and not good, and to do it yourself. I will guide you step by step to do it yourself, and I will start with a list of what's needed for this project. A Raspberry Pi and micro SD card. I am using Raspberry Pi 0W as it is the cheapest and smallest Raspberry Pi with Wi-Fi and it is perfect for this ambient lighting and running the Hyperion software. You could also use Raspberry Pi 3 or 4 with the same success. You will need LED strips. I'm using and I'm recommending the 5V WS2812 LED strips. 5 meters of these should suffice. After I finish the installation of my 47 inch TV, I have around 1.5 meters left, so this should be enough for bigger screen sizes as well. You will also need a power supply. I'm using this 5 volt 10 amps, which will be more than enough to power both the Raspberry Pi and the LED strip. A micro USB cable that you are ready to cut is also needed and one of these female DC connectors. Next thing on the list is this HDMI video capture device with loop. These L-shaped connectors are useful, but optional. You can buy them or you can cut and solder the corners or just twist the angles as I finally did. The choice is yours. You can find the links to all of the products in the video description. Now let's burn Hyperbian to a micro SD card. And Hyperbian is just a Raspberry Pi OS Lite with Hyperion software pre-installed. Exactly what we need. I'll go to hyperionproject.org and I'll click on this link, which is mix from Hyperion and a Raspberry Pi OS called Hyperion. I'll download the image, here it is. After the zip file is downloaded, I'll extract it to receive the following image file. And I'll start the Balena Etcher. This is a free tool that you can use to flash any image on a flash drive. And it's very easy to do. I'll just select the image. I'll click open. As a target, I'll select my 8 gigabyte micro SD card and I'll just click flash it will ask me for my computer password I'll type it and I'll wait for the flashing process to finish this is how you can configure the Raspberry Pi Wi-Fi and how to enable the SSH you just need to create two files in the micro SD card after Balena Etcher finish its job I'll open my finder or file explorer and now unplug, unplug the SD card back in in order to see my card here and I'll enter the boot partition of the SD card and I'll create two files inside one will be called SSH new document and this document will have the name of SSH without any extension just like that, here it is. This is needed in order to connect to my Raspberry Pi over SSH. And I'll need one more file with the following content. This file is needed to connect my Raspberry Pi to my Wi-Fi. I'll have to change three things here. The SSID, that's the name of my Wi-Fi, my password and my country code. It is US for USA, GB for Great Britain, and DG for Bulgaria where I'm located. And I'll type my password here and I'll save the file as WPA. Let me grab the exact name WPA underscore 
Clicking.conf. That's it, I'm ready. And at the end of the day, I'll have two new files. One is called SSH without any extension, without any content. And the other one is called WPA supplicant.conf with your credentials inside. That's it, I'm ready to go ahead. Unplug your SD card and put it in your Raspberry Pi and power it up. We need to configure the Hyperion software a bit before attaching the HDMI capturing device and move everything to the TV. To open the Hyperion dashboard, type the IP of your Raspberry Pi colon 1890 as a port and hit enter. In Hyperion dashboard, go to configuration, LED hardware and choose your controller type in my case it's under RPI PWM and it's called WS 281X. Enter the number of LEDs that you have. I end up choosing GRB here because with RGB selected I miss the red color. So play with these settings if your colors are mismatched. Go to capturing hardware and deselect platform capture and select enable USB capture and save the settings. Under effects menu, you can activate an effect during startup and its duration. Oh, I forgot something important here in LED layout. To type the exact number of LEDs that you have on top, on bottom and on left and right of your TV and to save the changes. So for example, if you have 140 LEDs, you can enter 35 everywhere. That's if you have a perfect square TV and save the changes. I'm kidding, of course. Type the exact number that you have in these fields. You can even see the max power consumption calculated in the right part of the screen. Now let's connect the Raspberry Pi and the LED strip to the power supply and power it up just to check that everything is fine. After we cut the USB cable, we have to peel the wires. I will use a knife, you can use whatever you wish. And this is the end result. I will use the red and the black cables. The red is the power and the black is the ground. The other two cables are for data and I will not need them, so I'll cut them. Just like that. And I'm ready with the cable that will power the Raspberry Pi 0 W and the LED strip. I will now connect the wires that are coming from the LED strip to the cable that we just created, the USB cable that we cut, and I'll put everything inside to one female DC connector. This is the end result. Now this will power both the Raspberry Pi and the LED strip. I will connect the female DC connector to the power supply. Later I'll connect everything to the power socket. But now I'll get one jumper wire. And I'll connect the data that is coming from the LED strip. That's the green cable in the middle. I will use the male end of the jumper wire and the other end should be female and I will put it in the GPIO 18 of the Raspberry Pi 0W. This is the sixth pin counted from the top. And I think I'm ready to power up everything and to test the startup effect without the HDMI video capture with a loop device of course. I don't need this for now. So I'll power up the Raspberry Pi and the LED strip and when Hyperion boots it will show the startup effect that I want to see. It is working good, very good. Now let's continue. You can now attach everything and check if it's working. 
this is what you need to do. You will need some kind of entertainment system. That system could be anything like Apple TV, Xbox, PlayStation, Chromecast, whatever. Just make sure that your entertainment system have HDMI output and you have to connect this output to the HDMI capturing device with loop. Eventually you have to power this device with 5V DC, but in my case this was not needed. So I guess this is optional, but you have to try it. And the HDMI capturing device have to be connected to the TV and to the Raspberry Pi. To the TV you need another HDMI cable, to the Raspberry Pi you need one USB-A to micro USB cable, which every house should have. After that you have to glue or tape the LED strip behind your TV for the corners, as I said before, you can cut them and solder them, you can use the L-shaped connectors that I showed you before, or you can just twist the angles like I did and I recommend the last one because it's easier and bulletproof. Next thing that you have to do is to connect the data cable that is coming from the LED strip to the GPIO 18 like you already saw. And finally you have to connect the power supply unit. 5V 10 amps should be enough for any screen size but you can check in Hyperion What's your recommended amperage? The connection is very easy. You have to connect the ground from the power supply to the ground of the LED strip and the ground that is powering the Raspberry Pi, exactly as I showed you earlier in this video. And the same is valid for the red line, the power wire. That's it, nothing complicated, very easy. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I will try to help as well as the other members of our community. Power everything and you should have the best ambient lighting that you have ever seen. Coming from Raspberry Pi, some LED strips, HDMI capturing device, Hyperion software and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Enjoy!